I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to talk about the Sigma R17 from BCN 3D. My friends over at Matter Hackers sent me this printer to check out. If you have any 3D printing needs, be sure to go check them out, matterhackers.com. They have a huge selection of filament and machines and give wonderful 3D printing support. All right, let's talk about this printer. This is the Sigma R17, the 2017 version of the Sigma from BCN 3D. As you can see up here, this is a dual extrusion printer and we're gonna talk about that, but first let's talk about setup. This machine is fully assembled when you get it in the box. You just gotta pull it out. It's packaged really well. It was a really nice setup in there with all the supplies that you need on on the top, including two rolls of filament. Getting the filament into these was a little bit different than most printers that I've used, but it wasn't hard and it worked just fine. It's just a different system than I've seen before. One of the really cool things I like about this printer is that it has a nice capacitive touch LCD screen on it, and that's what you use to run all of the setup and all of the calibration for this printer. The software seems really responsive, and it's a really nice way to get around through the menus of the printer. And for leveling the bed, the screen is actually really useful. After you run the calibration, the screen tells you which corner you need to adjust by using the thumb screws that are there. And the cool thing is that the screen shows you how far you need to turn it based on the tick marks that are on each one of the thumb screws. It's a really handy but pretty accurate way to make some small adjustments to get your bed level. So I went through the setup to get the printer running. It was really easy to get going and I tried to start making a print. The included SD card has several different models in G-code format ready to go, both single and dual extrusion prints. I decided to start with a single extrusion just to see how the machine was working. The first thing that jumped out to me was that I could not get any print to stick to the glass build plate. I tried three or four different prints of different sizes, I tried a few different settings, but I could not get any first layers to stick down. The fix for that was really easy, and you can see it right here, I just put on some blue tape. The blue tape worked perfectly well, I didn't have any adhesion problems after that, but it was kind of a pain to get a brand new printer and just have to stick blue tape on it. I've had good luck with the glass build plates on Ultimakers before, so I was a little disappointed that I couldn't get anything to stick to this glass. Speaking of the Ultimakers, specifically the Ultimaker 3, I'm gonna be making some comparisons because it is a dual extrusion printer that I've talked about before on this channel. So there are a lot of things that are in common, but also a lot of things that are very different between this and the Ultimaker 3. We'll get to that in a little bit. So after I got the blue tape on here, I was able to get some prints completed and they turned out fantastic. I started out with a little Marvin that's included, and a lot of people use this as a kind of a benchmark between different printers. And this was a single extrusion print, and it turned out really, really great. The finish on it is awesome. There were no extra pieces hanging off of it. It was just a really good little print. After that, I was curious to try the dual extrusion. I didn't have any trouble getting the dual extrusion going because also on the card was the Marvin in a two color print. The two color and the one color both have almost identical quality and that makes sense because really it's doing the same process, it's just switching between print heads, but I was really happy to see a successful dual extrusion print right off the bat. If you've watched any of the reviews that I've done in the past about 3D printers, I always have a benchmark file that I like to use and it's this little Yoda. This is on Thingiverse, this is not my model or anything, but it's one model that I like because there are a lot of overhangs, there's a lot of detail in it, and it's a really good way to compare from printer to printer. So I loaded up this file and printed it on the Sigma. You can see it's on the bottom. I mark all of these so I don't forget. This one was printed on the Ultimaker 3. The settings that I used in Cura are identical between these two, and the print quality is really close. It's not exactly the same. If you look at the one from the Sigma by itself, it's a really good print. You would look at this and think, wow, that's a really great quality. There are no real problems with it. But when you hold it up next to the Ultimaker, it's not quite as good. With that in mind though, it's not really likely that you're gonna print something really complex on two printers and look at them like this. By itself, it's a great print. If you look at them up close, you can see a very small amount of difference in just the overall softness of the surface. The Sigma print has a little bit more texture to it. I've printed out several different things on this machine, all of which I print on every machine that I try, and the print quality here is very, very good. And if you're just looking at this printer, all you really care about is the print quality of this printer. The only reason I brought up comparing it to the Ultimaker 3 is because it is also a dual extrusion printer. And when I talked about the Ultimaker 3, I made a point to say how expensive the machine is. For what you get in the Ultimaker 3, it's a really well-built machine. It prints very slow and it's very expensive. Let's compare that to the Sigma R17. First off is price. The Sigma is $1,000 cheaper than the Ultimaker 3. And that's a pretty big deal. To have a 3D printer that's $1,000 cheaper than one that is almost exactly the same in print quality is a pretty big gap. And the other big thing is speed. 
The Sigma seems to be just way faster than the Ultimaker 3, both in single and dual extrusion modes. I don't understand why single extrusion is so slow on the Ultimaker 3, but here it runs just like every other printer that I've used. The big thing that makes the dual extrusion faster on the Sigma is the way that they have their extruders set up. On the Ultimaker 3, you have two different hot ends in the same print head. It has to move one down and one up when you want to switch material type. It has to move off to the side. It has to clean off the tips. There's a bunch of stuff that has to happen in between both types of material. One of the really cool things about the Sigma is that it has an IDEX system, and that's independent dual extrusion. There are two separate print heads. Each one has its own hot end, its own material fed to it. It moves independently. And because of that, it can move one in, do its job, and move it out of the way while the other one's coming in to do its job. It's just faster overall. The way that it cleans off the hot ends as it switches back and forth is a little bit of a problem, but it's not really that big of a deal, and it's something I think they can improve over time with software. And what I mean here is that anytime you want to finish squirting out some material from one print head, you have to take it and clean off the tip somewhere. On other dual extrusion printers, that usually means they want to wipe it off on another area of the print bed. But but in this case, they have a little hopper on each side with a rubber flap, and when the hot end moves over that flap, it just kind of pushes off any extra plastic that's hanging off. Once it gets past that flap, it purges what's inside the hot end into this little bucket. That's where the problem lies here. It wastes a huge amount of plastic just by purging the nozzle every single time it goes back to its little bucket. I would imagine that with software, they could change how much was being lost into that bucket every time it moved back and forth. I have no idea if they'll do that or not, but it doesn't seem like a hard problem to solve. But let's talk about the machine a little bit more generally. Overall, super well built. The entire outside is a solid piece of metal, I assume it's aluminum, but it has a really nice sturdy feel to it. There are some plexiglass windows on the side which I assume help cut down on draft and also just help keep it a little more clean. The build area here is 210 by 297 by 210 millimeters, so it's pretty comparable to an Ultimaker 2 or an Ultimaker 3 or even a Prusa i3 Mark II. In fact, this and a lot of the other printers that are in kind of the same category these days have really similar cost, really similar build areas, and print quality. Overall, the build quality on this is really fantastic. They seem to have really taken their time to make everything fit together nicely. There's a lot of custom brackets in here, all of which are made of metal. There are a few 3D printed pieces on here. In fact, some of the clips that hold these things together are, but I really like the fact that a lot more of this is metal than most of the machines that I get to see these days. The LEDs inside here make it look kind of like a Virgin Airlines flight but overall it's pretty cool and it's plenty bright enough in there to see what you're working on or how the print's going. And like I mentioned before, the touchscreen on it is a really, really nice addition to a 3D printer. It just makes it really nice and easy to get around the printer and control any settings that you need to change. And one of the experiments that I've really been looking to do with a dual extrusion printer is mixing materials. Not to just do two colors, but instead to mix two different materials. In the past I've done that with PVA as a support material and that works great. And on this printer I tried to do PLA and NinjaFlex. Now personally, I did not have any luck getting the NinjaFlex to print correctly on here. But I know several other people who have this exact same machine and have had great success with NinjaFlex. I'm attributing that problem to me because I don't have any experience with printing flexible materials, so I may have just not known exactly how to get it working on this machine. And for that matter, I've not gotten it working on any other machine either, so I really do think the problem is me, not the Sigma. But that is definitely one of the things that I have a lot of interest in for using a dual extrusion printer to have dual materials, one flexible, one rigid, or one really strong. There's a lot of different combinations you can do to get some really cool output. So to wrap up, I think this is a fantastic printer if you're looking for dual extrusion, and you have this money to spend. It's still a lot of money, and I'm not gonna downplay that, but if you are looking for a dual extrusion printer, this one seems to be really high quality. So I really would recommend this one if it has the specific things that you're looking for in a printer. Now that said, if you're only looking for a single extrusion printer, this one is expensive. It has a lot of extra stuff that you wouldn't need for that. But again, if you're looking for dual extrusion and you have the money to spend, this is a fantastic option. Now if you have questions about this printer, you can leave them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them, but honestly, the best place to get answers would be Matter Hackers. I've worked with them before. If you remember the foosball table that I did, they are just fantastic about sharing knowledge and helping support everything that they sell. So if you want more information about this printer, I would really suggest you go over there and check them out. There'll be a link for it down in the description. I'm also gonna add some other links to reviews for this printers. I have several friends who have done reviews on this recently as well, and they have different insights, different experience, and they do different things with their printers. So I'm gonna link those down in the description in case they're helpful for you. I'll be back later in the week with 
with a normal project video, but in the meantime, if you want some stuff to watch, I've got lots of other videos for you to check out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell down there so you get notified as soon as I upload a new video. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.